Hey everyone, they say welcome back to another uh, discotech media anime pickups <laughs> haul. Um, yeah, uh, I talked about this on Twitter that I'd uh, picked up a quite sizable haul of uh, discotech stuff. It's hopefully the first um, haul of many for the rest of the year. I I've fallen woefully behind on discotech releases over like the last year and a bit, and plus there are some really older releases I've been meaning to buy for ages and haven't, and I want that to be my primary focus for pretty much the rest of the year. So I will still be getting other things in between, but uh, for the most part I'm going to go crazy with discotech stuff, because I want to get it all before it goes out of print, because, um, I mean, fortunately I've got them, but uh, Lock the Superman on DVD and Venus Wars on Blu-ray both went out of print from discotech recently, and it just reminded me, it's like, hey, this stuff isn't going to be around forever. You can't just drag your feet forever on it. You need to go out and buy that stuff. So I've gone through and done so. I have um, nine discotheque Blu-rays to share and uh, one DVD. So we're going to start off with pretty much the... Um, I pre-ordered these, so these are like pretty new, obviously. Uh, these came out in February. And if you've been following the discotheque um, schedule, you'll probably know what they are. Um, obviously, I'm a huge fan of... The Lagiverse, so here are my DVD copies. We've got Gats Plus 39, the movie on DVD, and a Dew on DVD. Also, have Eternal Fantasy on DVD. Hopefully, a Blu ray will come out for this eventually, because right now it hasn't from Discotheque yet. There is a Blu ray in Japan for that. But obviously, I picked up Gats Plus 39, the movie, and a Dew Gats Plus 39, the movie on Blu ray from Discotheque. So, yeah. These were highly anticipated releases from, uh, for me, and um, I've just been kind of, um, yeah, looking forward to getting this for a long, a long time. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really throwing my um, train of thought off. I've uh, been looking forward to getting these for a long time. I was really hopeful they were going to improve uh, the video quality because of the Japanese Blu-ray and the Korean Blu-ray, which I still own and I'm trying to sell at the moment. Um, is DNR to hell, so uh, Discotech said they were going to do something to uh, improve the video quality, and uh, they have done something, which I'll get into just a second. Just a second. Um, but one of the cool things about these releases is they come with replica movie pass, uh, movie pass, train passes. So we've got the three nine train pass here, which is pretty awesome. This is the unused version. The second film has one that's been used, which is kind of cool. So yeah, Gatsby Express 3.9 in the movie, on blue. And then the second one. So basically what they did, uh, Discotech, to try and improve the video quality, is they've put an artificial film grain over the films, trying to restore the look, even if it's artificial, and not the natural film grain that was scrubbed out. Um, it's relatively successful at improving the picture quality, although... And I've been kind of unkind by telling you about that, <clears throat> about the artificial film grain, because uh, you can kind of tell it's artificial, so it's it can be slightly distracting once you know it's not legit na natural film grain. Um, it can be slightly distracting, but it still uh, improves the image in my mind. It looks like it should look. It looks like it would have looked in the cinema when it was... Um, uh, first made and whatever, and you know, it looks like what it should have done before some crazy maniac at Toei came through and scrubbed it all out. That's kind of like the tragic thing when I think about it is that at some point, for both of these movies, the Dew and the original, um, at some point when they were remastering these films for HD in Japan for HD home video, the original transfers for these would have had the film grain intact and would have looked amazing, and then someone came along and went DNR up to 11 and just scrubbed it all out. So there's only a few, you know, the people that saw it back in the day in the cinemas and the people that were working in that booth at Toei or wherever the hell the remastering was done. And they're the only people in the world that have ever seen it in beautiful HD, <laughs> the way it was always meant to be in my mind. So, yeah. Uh, but overall, these are definitely um, worthy upgrades. Um, they have some minor... Um, in, uh, new extras, there's a, an isolated score on both, I think they sourced a few more trailers and there's a bunch of liner notes 
Um, they both both obviously come with the dub on Blu-ray for the first time officially. There are bootlegs out there that have the dub on these, but um, yeah, the uh, dub is included in, on Blu-rays for the first time in the world officially. And uh, yeah, they look far better than any of the other Blu-rays, even though it's all smoke and mirrors and artificial film grain and all that. And there is um, actually a couple of other things I want to mention. Uh, one is the logos. Uh, they did slightly different logos for these, as you can tell. So you've got the adieu there. Slightly different stylized logos. Um, there is a small minor, minor issue about it though, is that if you look at the logos on these, they're relatively clear which movie's which. Galaxy Express 39, adieu, Galaxy Express 39. Unfortunately, that isn't quite the case on these, because as you can see here, got a very stylized adieu there, just above what is exactly the same logo on both. So when you have them on the, on the shelf like this, they look practically the same, because the only difference is that very small adieu, other than that, the spines are essentially the same. So, uh, yeah. Um, I want to just quickly mention something, and I say quickly, probably take me a couple of minutes to read, I guess, or maybe about a minute, hopefully. Um, on the liner notes for the second movie, uh, there's a quote from Leiji Matsumoto. I want to give you some context before I read it, because it's a wonderful, wonderful quote, but uh, it's outdated. So, <laughs> basically, it's from an interview at the end of production, or just before the movie was about to be released in cinemas, or had been re just released in cinemas. Uh, yeah, it's a quote from an interview from Leiji Matsumoto, and it's really wonderful. <laughs> it's on the liner notes, and then uh, I ended up having to write it all out. It took up more time and <laughs> space on the page than I expected. So anyway, here we go. So this is a quote from Leiji Matsumoto at the end of um, production, or when the film was released. Adieu was released in 1982. Okay. Uh, the main theme of Galaxy Express 3.9, the celebration of mortality, remains unchanged, drawing heavily from the days of my youth. I couldn't escape the thought that I was using Tetsuro as a vehicle to fulfilling my own dreams of boarding the Express and journeying, journeying across the cosmos with Metaru and the Conductor. But just as all stories have a beginning, they must eventually follow their flow and come to an end. I too must close the door on the chapter I too must close the door on this chapter of my life and bid 3-9 farewell. I feel overcome with emotion but also a hurt that bubbles inside me at the thought of parting ways with Metaru. To leave 3-9 is to leave Metaru forever. That doesn't mean that Galaxy Express, Galaxy Express <laughs> 3-9 is over. It keeps chugging along in my heart, serving as the foundation of many projects to come. Uh, will there Will there be another instalment set after Adieu Galaxy Express 3.9? Question mark. Um, if such a thing exists, I'd like to believe you'll find it by looking inside your hearts. Nothing would make me happier. I talked earlier about the celebration of mortality. Part of that is the flow of life from a parent to child, child to grandchild. And that's what I want this film to be, from me to you. May the Express run through your memories forever. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I mean, obviously, this was by far the last time we'd ever uh, see Metaru and stuff. She's made choice appearances uh, since then in many uh, other Leiji Matsumoto adapted works, be it manga or anime OVAs. And uh, yeah, she appears in a couple of TV series as well. She's in Cosmo Warrior Zero for a hot minute. So um, yeah, but I just feel that it's such a beautiful quote, like from the creator of those stories and, you know, working on the film, just like, it's like a gift to anyone who enjoys it. This is my gift to you. Enjoy it. And I, I hope it lives with you forever. It's so wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So yeah, that's that. That's nine minutes on Galaxy Express. Let's move on to the rest of the stuff, shall we? It's so funny. I got legit nervous reading that out. Like I was in class and it was like I was like five or something standing up in the front of the class having to read something. Plus my own handwriting is atrocious. It's difficult to read sometimes. <laughs> it's so weird. I got generally nervous. It's so funny. Um, okay, so I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, Blu-rays left to show and uh, one DVD. So um, we shall go with this because it's been a long time in the making. So. 
I've been talking about picking these up for freaking ages. There's probably videos of me on this channel, probably like four, maybe even five years ago, when these around the time these come out, when I was talking about I want to get these. Uh, the Blu-ray has only been a more recent thing, or even now, I think the Blu-ray is about a year and a half, maybe even two years old. I'm not sure, but the DVD has been around for a long time. So I finally picked up uh, Fatal Fury: The Legend of the Hungry Wolf OVA. This to my mind, or Legends of the Hungry Wolf, I'm pretty sure this contains both OVAs because it runs at 120 minutes, so it should have both of the original OVAs. And now I have obviously Fatal Fury the movie on Blu ray, so I'm kind of semi glad that I took so long to buy this because now I didn't make the mistake of buying a DVD for this. I now have the Blu ray, which is much more uh, better, obviously. So, uh, yeah, really happy to have these. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the fighting games, I've barely ever played them. Like the SNK Fighters wasn't really something I ever played growing up. I was mainly a. I played Tekken games and then it was like. Capcom fighting games really. I didn't really play a lot of SNK stuff, but still, like, I love my fighting game OVAs and movies. I think they're a lot of fun, so I'm really happy to have this, obviously. So, yeah, this is the movie that came out after the OVAs. Uh, it has a dub, trailers, art gallery, runs about 96 minutes. I'm looking forward to having, I'll probably end up marathon, uh, marathoning all of this in like one afternoon or something, or one evening. So, yeah, we've got. Then there's the Hungry Wolf. So this is two uh, two OVA episodes on one disc, which I think came out uh, yeah a couple of years before the movie did. But yeah, really happy to finally have these. Um, so like I said, long, long time in coming. Um, I, when it comes down to my um, fighting game uh, OVA movie section now, um, I think I've pretty much got everything. The only thing I'm really missing is like the Tekken, the motion picture. Actually, there's quite a lot. Art of Fighting, OVA, uh, Street Fighter Alpha, Generations. I'd also like to get the Street Fighter American Animated Series and like the Street Fighter V series. I'm kind of waiting for Discotech to bring that out. So actually, yeah, there's quite a few things left. <laughs> okay, uh, what's next? I'll go with this. So, uh, as I showed in my last Discotech update, um, I did pick up Go Shogun albeit on DVD. I will be getting the Blu-ray for this and in preparation for that um, I picked up the Blu-ray of the sequel film so we've got Go, Go, Shogun, Go Shogun, The Time, Eshonje or whatever, however you say it. Um, interesting tidbit about this, this has two dubs on it. It's got the American dub and the UK manga dub which have drastically different interpretations for like some of the characters, at least with their accents because uh, the main female here I think is French, so in the manga dub they actually do give her a French accent, where in the American one I don't believe they do. But uh, yeah, Go Shogun, Time Etranger, <laughs> again, I haven't really seen it, so it's just, I haven't seen it at all really. Well actually so I've really seen it because I actually have seen clips of it, due to it being on one of the um, uh, Mike Tall dubs that Time Forgot thing. So I actually have seen some clips of it, but yeah. Uh, uh, I will be picking up the Blu-ray for the TV series pretty soon, hopefully, so I'll be selling this DVD uh, pretty soon as well to fund that, but yeah, happy to have both, and it's really cool that we'll have the movie and the TV series on Blu-ray, we do have them, I just need to buy them both, obviously, I've got the movie, just need to get the TV series, but it's really cool to have like this mini like 80s mecha giant robot saga um, from like way back when, as I said, like in the 80s, early 80s at that, uh, to have that all on Blu-ray is pretty crazy, so, uh, yeah, um, next up, uh, here's something that I've still not watched, and I say that because I've owned it on DVD twice, I had the UK release, which I didn't watch, and then I replaced it with the American release, so yeah, Beth again, movies one and two, which I've still not watched, and now I have the Blu-ray of Beth again, uh, movies 1 and 2, so yeah, which I still not watched. Um, main reason being, uh, if you don't know, this movie is about a young boy uh, living in Hiroshima at the time when the bombs fell. So yeah, um, I've seen Grave of the Fireflies, I know what this shit can be like, like it's horrendous, horrific, like I, um, so I'd... <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen like some animated sequences from this, especially when the bomb actually falls. I'm pretty sure it's pretty harrowing 
um, animation for it. I don't know, again, it's something I really want to watch, I just could be in the right mood for it, I guess. Or I could just surprise myself one day, just go, I'm just going to put it in and suffer it, because that's what, probably what it would be like. Um, yeah. So it's both movies, uh, both of them have a dub, or is it? No, just one of them has a dub, and the other one's subtitled. But yeah, both movies in full frame, 4x3, on Blu-ray and beautiful HD. So uh, yeah, um, kind of an annoying thing uh, about this release, though, is, <laughs> is that the spine is upside down for some reason. If I show you what I mean, like the logo goes this way rather than down goes up. I don't know why they did that. I can only hope that it was a, just a mistake or something. And like, cause I have like three theories, right? One, it was uh, a mistake because it's also, but it is also on the inside, which leads me to believe maybe it wasn't. Same on the inside too. Uh, but the other side, uh, the other theory would be that Japan, um, the Japanese side made them do it like that for some reason but at the same time that like, all the other DVD releases including the one I have here obviously the logo is the right way up so it'd be kind of weird because they would presumably be dealing with the same people when they're handling the license and getting approval for artwork and stuff so and then only because I was really like clutching at straws trying to figure out why the hell is this upside down if it's not a mistake and if it's not like a Japanese uh, requirement like Maybe it's because it's about bombs dropping. So the <laughs> I am ninety nine point nine 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 sure that's not true because it's incredibly insensitive. But it's literally I was clutching at straws just trying to figure out why the hell is this upside down. <laughs> so frustrating because it basically means when I put it on the shelf now, I'm get, it would look like that. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to have it upside down like that. So at least the logo is the right way around and reads properly. So yeah. Um, Happy to have it, I guess. Again, it's going to be one of those things where I'm probably just going to keep dragging my feet until I finally watch it. Don't know what I'll do with the DVD now. It's obviously not worth anything like it was before. But um, yeah, I know I'll get to it eventually. I'm curious if anyone, any of you, have seen it and what you thought of it. Um, penultimately, kinda, um, we've got um, the Techman Blade franchise. So I have all three of the Media Blasters DVDs. And then I have the original Discotech DVD of the OVA, Techman Blade 2, a sequel, which they also put out on Blu-ray. So I now have the Blu-ray version. Um, I'm probably going to keep the DVD, though, because even though this is on Blu-ray, I believe maybe half of it is actually upscaled. I think only the first three or four episodes are actually in HD, and either the last three or last two episodes are upscaled. So, yeah, I'll be probably keeping the... Um, uh, DVDs as a result of that, but yeah, decided to add this to the collection. It was pretty cheap. I was like, well, I might as well get it. So it's going to be a picture improvement. Um, they actually got the source uh, for this HD version from um, the Japanese Blu-ray box of Tekkaman Blade, the TV series, which had the OVA bundled in with it. So I, I was really hopeful. And it's been quite a while now, but I was really hopeful that uh, Discotech were going to rescue the TV series and put it out on Blu-ray because it has a nice Blu-ray in Japan, nice proper HD scan. So yeah, I'm really hoping at some point this will come out on Blu-ray. I've not watched the series yet, it, you know, it'd be kind of, again, one of those annoying things where it's like, I've got the DVDs, didn't get around to watching them, now there's a Blu-ray. But again, I would still rather have a Blu-ray, so yeah, it'd be cool if Discotech were able to rescue this series and put it out on Blu-ray as well. It would take up less space on the shelf, even though these are quite nice. <laughs> These are quite nice um, packaging wise. They're the like Digibook packaging that uh, Disco, uh, not Disco Tech, Media Blasters did for like uh, Beast King Go Line and this. I think they're the only ones they did actually. But they come like these like proper like thick like book packaging or whatever. So anyway, I don't really have a lot to say about this other than I'm glad to have it and hopefully whenever I get around to watching it, um, it will be awesome, obviously. Who knows? Okay, so the final three things I've got are all related to each other in some way. They're all from the same franchise. Um, a collection that I've fallen, unfortunately, far behind on uh, over like, the last two years after getting pretty much caught up. Uh, the two years, you know, prior to that, 
Over the last two years, I've barely bought anything to do with the franchise, means I've fallen behind again, which is really not good. A lot of the things I want to do with discotheque stuff and like why I want to buy a ton of it is I don't want to have this huge shopping list anymore. I just want to get all caught up, and then when new stuff comes out, I'll just pre-order it. Because I'm not always interested in everything they release every month. Like, in an ideal world, it'd be great to get all that stuff, but most of the time, like, you know, money's not infinite. <laughs> it's finite. It becomes the same. I was like, well, not everything they release every single month is stuff I want. So it'd be really awesome to get all the stuff I do want from their back catalogue, and then as and when they announce new stuff, I can just pre-order it and buy it the second it comes out and just remain up to date. It'd be great. Um, it's a sizable investment, which will t probably take me the rest of the year to do, but I'd like to do it. So anyway, yeah, one of the things I've fallen behind on is the Lupin franchise, but I'm getting slowly caught up here with free Blu-rays, so we've got uh, the Lupin the Third, The Legend of the Gold of Babylon, finally coming out, the long-storied uh, discotheque release. Um, they originally announced that they were going to put this out back in like 2007, and that release never materialised, it was going to be on DVD, obviously. Um, but yeah, we finally got a release back uh, in late last year, in 2018. Uh, this is the first um, discotheque release of uh, anything Pink Jacket, Lupin, like Lupin the Third Part 3, the AT series. Um, and it obviously would be the first because there's only two parts, like two things that related to that franchise, which is this, and then there's a 50 episode TV series, which I'm sure discotheque will release probably within the next couple of years. So yeah, uh, we got Legend of the Gold of Babylon. Um, they went back and dubbed this, which is pretty awesome. Like, Discotheque have been doing that quite a lot with some of uh, the Lupin franchise recently. So that's really cool that like, they're doing another, more one of the more recent TV specials is getting a dub. Um, I'm hoping that whenever the hell they finally get Blood Spray of Goemon, uh, the latest in like the Fujiko Mine timeline of Lupin stuff, I hope that gets a dub. But anyway, yeah, Legend of the Gold of Babylon. I've not watched it yet. Um, I look forward to watching it immensely. It's supposed to be really wacky and crazy, as the Pink Jacket series kind of was. It was definitely the most experimental and strange of the uh, Lupin entries, which is saying something, because Lupin definitely goes some places across its whole history. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one's pretty strange. Probably on par, I would imagine, or close to it, with like The Secret of Marmo, which is also pretty strange when you watch it. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching this one a lot on Blu-ray with a new dub. I'd like to see that relatively soon. Uh, the next one is a replacement. Um, I picked up the Blu-ray release of Bye Bye Lady Liberty, which is the first TV special, obviously. Used to have this on DVD. Now I have it on Blu-ray. It's really nice. Um, cool thing about the re-release is it now has the proper spine. It originally had like a black spine. So now everything like lines up better with the rest of the TV specials and stuff. The only other one that currently doesn't line up is um, with the way that they do it with like the special number and what year it came out and stuff at the, at the bottom is the Hemingway Papers, which is the second one. Um, pretty much all of like the uh, TV specials in the, uh, the cell painted era of a, a TV special, so basically from like 1989, the first one, right up to like 1999, 2000 or something. Pretty much all of them have Blu-rays in Japan. Uh, we've currently got three of them on Blu-ray from Discotech. I'll be showing another one in a minute. We also got Voyage to Danger, which I think is the fifth or sixth one. Um, it'd just be really cool if we could just get them all. I was really hoping that's what was going to happen, but so far it hasn't. Um, we've got some nice re different artwork underneath on this one, which I don't recall if the DVD had that. And I'm pretty sure it didn't, because I'm pretty sure the DVD didn't... Yeah, the DVD didn't come with a slip cover. That was before Discotheque were doing slips. So, yeah. It might have had it on the inside artwork. I don't really remember. Although, probably not, because they don't really do clear DVD cases. So, yeah. There's lots of new artwork on this one, which is kind of nice. And this is one of the... Uh, this is the only of the uh, first five TV specials that comes with a dub. And uh, the Mike Tool commentary is still on here. Really, really cool. Mamori, not Mamori Oshii. Uh, Sami Dezuki, um, Lupin Animation, on Blu-ray, really cool. Uh, the dub is from the UK, it's kind of strange. <laughs> anyway, and the final thing for this video in this discotheque haul, uh, I picked up Lupin the Third, The Island of the Assassins, or Island of Assassins. This is the 1997 special, uh, the ninth one in the franchise. Um, yeah, uh, this was actually one of the weaker, well, I shouldn't say weaker, 
This is probably one of those, it is actually one of the stronger Lupin specials from like the ones that Funimation dubbed back in the day. Like those like 10 things they did, like specials and movies. This is one of the stronger ones in terms of story, but it's one of the least Lupin types, uh, I don't know, feeling, uh, it's, it's very uncharacteristic of what what you expect from Lupine. It's a bit different, it's got a different character designer. It's a bit more serious basically and darker in tone. Um, it's okay. I know people love this. There's a, quite a few people I know that really like this. I think um, the anime hero gave this a full 10 out of 10. For me, I liked its story quite a lot, but um, a lot of the charm of what I really love from Lupin isn't in this. And again, that's not to say it's not good. It is good, but it's just not what I necessarily want from Lupin. But there's also a ton of Lupin stuff like that, so I don't begrudge this existing or anything. Um, it's an interesting, different take, if you will, on Lupin and stuff. And um, yeah. So yeah, Lupin the Third, Island of Assassins on Blu-ray. As I said, this is one of the ones that Funimation did back in the day. So this has the Funimation cast dub on it, which is really cool. It has Sunny Strait as Lupin, which is probably my favourite Lupin uh, dub actor. So yeah, and this is a Blu-ray DVD combo. Uh, the DVD will look probably way better also than the old uh, Funimation release, because the DVD will be obviously sourced from the Blu-ray. So. Yeah, uh, that's my first discotheque haul. It was mainly just a bunch of like movies and OVAs, some of the cheaper stuff before I start really delving into some of the more expensive like TV series stuff I want to get, a um, ton of going to guy stuff. But there is also a bunch of like the shorter, cheaper movie OVA releases that I want to get as well. Just lots and lots and lots of discotheque stuff to get over like the last, oh, over this the rest of this year. So. Yeah, uh, Owen Blaze, thank you for listening to this stupidly long pickups video. I'm not sure it was overly entertaining, but there you go. <laughs> so yeah, Owen Blaze, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.